All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Transitional Champion Podcast. I forgot the name of the show. No, I didn't. <clears throat> Sorry. As you can tell by my uh, voice here a little bit, uh, I've been fighting a cold uh, or a sinus infection or something for the last several days. And that, you know, mixed with my insomnia uh, from the time I woke up Tuesday to the time I went to sleep last night, Thursday. I got about six hours of sleep altogether. And during that time, I was not tired. Uh, so it's been uh, it's been a weird couple of days. But anyway, got uh, work done on the uh, arcade back there. You can see I got uh, a joystick set up there. So that's pretty nice. So that's fun to have. And um, but yeah, so uh, Nathan, Nakamura loving Nathan Kennedy, he uh, had to work two nights of overtime in a row, and his overtime runs about eight hours. And he already works, um, you know, a late night shift anyway, so an extra eight hours into the next day. So that's two in a row he's had to do as well. Uh, so one, that's why there was no show yesterday. That's why we had to move it to today. Um, and then he hasn't responded. As far as I know, he's still asleep. Uh, you know, doing 16 hours of overtime in two days will probably do that to you on top of your full-time job. So we're going to go through, um, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about Major League Wrestling from the show they had this week that was really good. Uh, new episode tonight. It's on every Friday on BN Sports. And again, it looks like they'll be putting them on YouTube. And also if you get the, I think it's the Fight app, F-I-T-E, um, you can get the app and you can watch it on there as well. Um, I'm not sure there's another one wrestling, what is it? Global wrestling network or something. There's another one you can get. I think that, that they might be broadcasting on there also. So I know there, there's several ways you can catch it, but it's definitely, it's a show I much prefer to what we're getting on. We're on SmackDown these days, but, um, well, and, and, and we're on SmackDown. I mean, granted, it's Friday. Raw was on Monday. SmackDown was on Tuesday. So it's been several days, but it feels like I watched those two weeks ago. Like I, I was sitting there this morning trying to think without looking at my notes or anything I have on the screen over here. I was trying to think what, what exactly happened in SmackDown. There wasn't a whole lot because they did the whole uh, Kofi gauntlet thing. And that took a lot of time, but uh, I'm just, tr I was trying to think back. It's like, wow, that seems like it was so long ago. Um, Fedmon, thanks for being in the chat here. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Burns is the type of boss. Yeah, uh, actually, he doesn't live in Springfield. I live in Springfield. I actually do live in Springfield, Illinois. Um, and we do have a, a large power plant here. It's not nuclear, though. Uh, but Nathan, I don't know where Nathan lives. He lives in the outback of whatever. Uh, where is Tron? Fedmon is asking. Oh, you mean on the arcade machine? Uh, I don't have a, a, a spinner. I have to get a spinner uh, for those games because if you remember um, on, on the four-way game, you have to you have the tank control or you have the control where you're shooting the grid bugs trying to get in the IO tower, um, you know, or you're in the MCP cone where you're shooting, or when you're playing Discs of Tron, you need it to aim. So I have to get a spinner attachment in order to play the uh, Tron games. But thanks for asking, and yes, I am looking into it. So. All right. Oh, and no, the glasses. You know, my son just mentioned that I wasn't wearing the glasses. The thing is, I don't know where the glasses are. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I did some cleaning. I did some rearranging. Um, a, a, a couple weeks ago, I put this new computer back here. Uh, this is uh, an, an older iMac that I upgraded and put uh, Mojave on. Um, and then, you know, I was working with the arcade machine and uh, and actually this computer that I'm on right now, my main, it's actually a laptop that I use. It's a Dell Inspron. It's a gaming machine. It's actually a, a really nice machine. I had to actually reformat uh, this weekend, reformat and reinstall Windows because idiot me, I, um, I, I was trying to, I was messing around with uh, Linux uh, live USB sticks and, you know, just trying out different distros and goofing around and I wasn't paying attention and it, it formatted the USB stick and it made it, and it installed Linux to it, but then it changed the master boot record 
so that it would boot to the USB stick thinking it was the hard drive instead of making it a live USB stick. And, and that was my fault because I wasn't paying attention because it was like the fourth or fifth one that day uh, I was messing around with because I was trying Mint and I was trying Scent. I was trying uh, Debian. I was trying Ubuntu. Uh, and then I was on, at that point, I was messing around with, I think it's Tails, the high security one. And I just wasn't paying attention. So I had to, I had to wipe my entire uh, hard drive. And, and the thing was, my, my M2 drive, uh, my, my SSD, it was still there, and I could still see the data, but it wouldn't boot to it. No matter what I did, something had corrupted the the boot header on the drive, and I could not reconstruct it. I tried. I tried so many things. I tried for like a day and a half, and I eventually just got the, the, the folders information I wanted. I you know put it into a, a, an external shell, copied it to another computer, then I had to reinstall Windows 10, copy some of the files back. And so I just had to reinstall everything. Also, though, I did upgrade my Comcast. I've been having a lot of problems with Comcast um, Internet. I was talking to the guy. I was using an older modem. He was like, you can get this newer one. And so I was talking to him. I said, you know, they, they downgraded my upload speed uh, like a year ago. Right when I started to do a lot of live streaming, I was trying to do a lot of live streaming. If you remember, I was doing live streaming of toy reviews and unboxings and stuff. And right around that time, right before I started doing that, they dropped the upload speed from 20 megabit to 10. So um, that was part of the reason why they didn't look as good. And I didn't know it at the time. I, I just kept messing with settings. I was like, why doesn't this look as good as it used to? I kept messing with everything, trying to get it to look nice. Couldn't figure it out, realized eventually a couple months ago that they had actually dropped the upload speed. So while I was in there messing around with the router, I talked to him. I said, hey, uh, I want to upgrade my upload speed. Well, the only way to upload or to, to raise your upload was to move to a higher tier. And I was looking at the prices. And the way I had it before, I was like at 150 megabit download. It was 10 megabit upload. And then I was paying for the unlimited data. And for the same price, I could get a much faster download and a faster upload. So uh, basically what I have now is full gigabit download and 35 megabit upload. So instead of having 10, I'm at 35 up. So hopefully the stream looks a whole lot clearer and smoother um, and you can let me know. Uh, but yeah, so there's been a lot of just random stuff going on, plus my insomnia and my cold uh, and everything else messing with all of this uh so your awesome man cave won't go a motto on on us go you, you mean using the 20 dollar craig tablet from big lots to, to do the live streaming is that what you're talking about uh because no i i, I will not be doing that uh you're not going to see um blocky 240 by 360 uh live stream video like joe has i'm also eating some cheese curds my wife was real nice to me she got me some uh cheddar cheese curds. I love cheese curds. Like I, I legit want to move to uh, Wisconsin. You get your own. I'm trying to steal my cheese curds. Hey, stop stomping your feet. You're moving the camera. You get your own cheese curds. I will. My son keeps trying to steal my cheese curds because he saw that I had them. All right. So anyway, um, man, and I'm looking the last two days I've been kind of out of it because of my insomnia and the sleep and everything. And I'm looking and I've got like dozens of messages and like 250 emails. I've, I've been like trying to get rid of like spam and ads as they come through, but I have all these emails from people and comic book PR and whatever I need to go through. I haven't really looked at, but uh, let's see. Fedmon says that Joe's setup has gone sideways on many a podcast because his tech is older than him. Oh, well that's yeah. And, and part of that is because he's using an old tablet. Like he is legit using one of those old, cheap tablets i think it's running like it well he said he bought a new one but i think even his new one is running like android 4.4 kit kat or something like that like it is ancient and uh yeah they, it's 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 pretty bad and i've thought a couple times about maybe sending him at least like you know a half decent laptop because i do have laptops sitting around here maybe one of these days i'll I'll wipe one and send it to him so he can have something a little nicer. But yeah, that's that's just Joe. I don't know. There's something about the way he does things. He's still using a Tandy 286 to do all his uh, custom 
backer cards. No, it's not that old, but it's old. All right. Let's talk about some wrestling. Oh, first, uh, before I get into the wrestling, somewhere I have it in, opened in a tab. Here it is. Um, Willis Wheeler contacted us the other day, and he was talking about... Um, he was talking about the uh, feud between Batista and Triple H. And he said the whole Triple H and Batista thing <coughs> excuse me, started at SmackDown 1000. Uh, Batista came back to the show, said he and Hunter, or said uh, Hunter had never beat him in a match before, and he's been ducking his calls ever since he left to do movies. So apparently that's where the whole Triple H Batista thing started was with SmackDown 1000. And I don't Maybe I watched that. I know I watched the Raw 1000. I don't know that I watched the SmackDown 1000. So, anyway, hats off to Willis Wheeler. Oh, and, and apparently I do, and after he said that, I did a little bit of looking into it. And they, they did, apparently, they wanted Batista to be on the show because he's a big star. He's a guy in Hollywood. So he had him say this stuff about Triple H. Just, you know, whatever, so he'd have a reason to be there. But at the time, he was going to be leaving to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so there wasn't any way he could make an appearance at any of the pay-per-views. Well, then, James Gunn got fired from Guardians of the Galaxy, so the movie went, you know, halted, went back into pre-production uh, because they had to, you know, rework the script, whatever, find a new director. And then, eventually, James Gunn and Disney worked everything out, and he got rehired and came back, so they're going back to doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so now they will be doing it, but because so much time has passed, they had to restart a lot of the production. Uh, they couldn't just pick up where they left off months ago because a lot of people had moved on to other projects or whatever, so they have to get new people and whatever. So they are going to be doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and they will have James Gunn back, uh, but uh, Batista now has time that he could come in and do a WrestleMania angle. So that's why he was able to come back for that. So there you go. Um, let's see here. All right. Major League Wrestling Fusion. Oh, wait. I, Fedmon, I just saw, has a new comment. Joe got a new tablet from Nathan for Christmas this past year. Oh, okay. All right. So he did finally upgrade to something more decent. Because if it came from Nathan, it's going to be better than anything Joe would buy. Because I don't know what it is about Joe, but Joe's like, well, I'm going to spend $250 on this Castle Grayskull playset. But when it comes to buying a piece of expensive technology that I'll use on a regular basis, I'm going to go for the cheapest thing I can possibly find. And it's probably like all in Korean, and Joe doesn't know what the menus do or whatever, so good for Nathan, uh, actually, for getting him a new tablet. So, all right then. Yeah, and, and I should probably know that uh, because it happens on Fans of Power and Beyond Retro and whatever. But I don't always watch every single one of those episodes, I'll be honest with you guys. And it's not because I don't like it or anything. It's just a time thing with running the website and all the other stuff that we do here. All right. Now on to wrestling. Uh, now that we've killed a whole 20 minutes. Major League Wrestling this week. Again, it's a great show. Uh, MLW Fusion, if you can find it somewhere. Oh, I, I, I like it better than ROH right now. Um, I definitely like it better than TNA right now. Uh, it's obviously better than we're on SmackDown right now. But anyway, we got uh, Puma King versus one of the L.A. Parks, La Parca, uh, if you remember those. This is uh, he Hio De La Park. Uh, it's one of those guys. I don't, I don't know. Like, I know there's different La Parcas. There's an, a La Parca and an L.A. Park and Hio De La Park and whoever. And I don't know. If it's like father and son or cousins or uncle, nephew, I don't know exactly how it is. But anyway, um, it was, again, it was a lucha match. So it was different than a regular um, old-fashioned, uh, you know, North American U.S. wrestling match. And this was a lot of fun. Uh, just a lot of high energy, a lot of good stuff. Um, they, they started at the beginning with one of those, like, quick, rapid succession. And selling in a lucha match is completely different. And it it... When it's treated as a lucha match, I can treat it differently than a regular match. It's one thing to have cruiserweights in a WWE environment doing, <coughs> excuse me, a lucha style match when you have so much other 
regular matches going on with the same type of guys. It's different when you then bring in Lucha guys and the Lucha guys do a Lucha style match. Because again, it is different. You know, whereas Japanese, they have more of that strong style, which is more of like an MMA infused, a lot more strikes and kicks and um, submissions like you would get in a regular UFC fight. It's a different style of match. You sell it differently. You react differently. Um, the momentum is different. It's a lot more acrobatic in Lucha than regular. So at least if, if you're not familiar with different wrestling styles from around the world, it's a great show to watch because they do showcase uh, different guys. Um, we had – there's this tag team, uh, the Contra Unit. They defeated Chico Adams and – Vertigo Rivera. Rivera? Yeah. Um, well, actually, they didn't defeat him. They were defeated by them, but it was a DQ because it was a squash match. And basically, the Contra unit, they are just big dudes that come in, and they just destroy, and they beat up. And eventually, it just gets to the point where they just start grabbing weapons. They grab chairs. They grab whatever. They just start beating people with them. They get disqualified, so they lose, but they just come in and demolish everybody. Um, imagine a group like uh, Public Enemy, um, you know, coming in, uh, you know, when they were doing like their their run-ins with uh, uh, WWE or WCW, and uh, you know, there's no hardcore rules or whatever. So suddenly they just start smashing stuff and breaking stuff, and they get disqualified. But then you still get another five minutes of them just beating the crap out of the guys. That's what this was. It was fun. It was old school. Uh, I just really enjoyed the way that they were uh, fighting it. So. It was really good. And it's also uh, Jacob Fatu, um, who is, uh, is that Rikishi's son or nephew? I can't remember. Anyway, um, so it was, a, it was a lot of fun, a lot of good stuff. And also uh, Jim Cornette on commentary uh, again. Uh, I believe these were taped at, at the Chicago show. Um, I didn't write it down. But yeah, I think these were taped at the Chicago show last last week or two weeks ago uh, that we talked about and had the cage match. Um, so anyway, it, it was, uh, I think, the stuff that happened before the stuff that was live on TV. Um, so comment, uh, Cornette was there doing commentary, and he mentioned that a fan um, like jumped the rail and ran into the ring, but they didn't actually show it on TV. So I don't know if that was work or if that actually happened, um, but still kind of interesting. All right. Um, we had, um, let's see, that was the, that match. Oh, so then the main event, this was a lot of fun. The main event was the, um, the tag team champions of the Hart Foundation, uh, which is actually Teddy Hart and Davy Boy Smith Jr. Um, they have Brian Pillman Jr. in their corner, and they were against the Dynasty, MJF and Richard Holiday. Um, and again, this was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're familiar with Teddy Hart, you know that he just goes out and goes crazy. Davy Boy Smith Jr. is a much more down-to-earth, more, I don't want to say conservative wrestler, but he's more of your standard wrestler. Two of them just had a great match. But the problem was um, Hart Foundation went for their double-team Canadian Destroyer, um, and the guy who was there uh, for the Dynasty, uh, I wrote his name down somewhere, Alexander Hammerstone. Um, he threw in a chair. Um, uh, it hit uh, Hart and Smith. Uh, they both called for the the bell from the referee. Uh, so they won by disqualification. Uh, Brian Pillman tried to get involved. He got hit by the chair. The crowd, you know, they started chanting uh, a chant that I can't repeat on this show uh, because there are children in the room with me. But hey, get back to school. You go back and check. Start with Monday and check your whole week. Anyway, <laughs> my son's trying to tell me he's done with school for the week. I don't think so. Um, but anyway, the crowd was chanting. They didn't want it to see it end in a DQ because the match was so great. I mean, the match was really a lot of fun. Um, but the Dynasty just beat down everybody in the Heart Foundation, stood tall over them, and set up for, again, future feud, uh, continuing the feud. Maybe even we'll get a... Um, six-man, three-on-three match out of it. Anyway, Major League Fusing is only an hour, and it's a lot of fun. Um, 
you know, it, when they did the cage match, it was pretty long. But generally speaking, you get, you know, three, maybe sometimes four matches out of it. And they're just good, solid wrestling right. matches. It's like the kind of stuff, honestly, if you go to a local indie show, you're going to see maybe some of the same guys and some of the same setups and matches. But they're definitely ones that I prefer over what we get again and again on WWE uh, television. All right. Let's get to Monday Night Raw. I still haven't heard. Yeah, so there's still nothing from Nathan. So I guess he's sleeping. Um, so, all right. Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman came out. They started the show. Um, they talked about how um, Seth Rollins is a revisionist. Uh, he talked about how Lesnar has problems beating up uh, little guys with the same type of style. Um, he noted that even though he may have some problems with him, he does defeat generally those guys, and he defeats AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan and Finn Balor. So, uh, you know, whatever. Um, he said uh, it was funny to him that on a night that he had a match with Drew McIntyre, he would call out Lesnar. Um, Drew McIntyre is a career killer, maybe not to the same level that Brock Lesnar is, but he's still a, a strong, powerful guy. This brought out McIntyre, who interrupted, and at first you thought maybe there might be some sort of heat between them. Paul Heyman didn't look like exceptionally pleased that he came out to, uh, to get involved, but uh, McIntyre said that he was happy someone was giving him respect, um, and that he basically came out here to tell Lesnar, he didn't have to worry about facing Seth Rollins at WrestleMania because he was going to kill him uh, then and there tonight. So, of course, Rollins runs out, attacks McIntyre from behind. Uh, he hit him, he hit him. Uh, he grabbed a chair, hit him, 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 hit him. Uh, it was a lot. Um, he ran to the ring, but Lesnar bailed. And so um, Rollins, uh, you know, was like standing there for whatever reason. Rollins didn't like jump out of the ring and continue to chase after him. He just let Brock Lesnar smile at him, laugh at him, and Brock Lesnar left. So there you go. Uh, they had Finn Balor come out. He wished everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, he didn't say that luck was luck of the Irish uh, was not on his side. Um, but he didn't plan on being with the Intercontinental title for very long. But he was interrupted by Bobby Lashley, Leo Rush. Uh, Rush called him a little leprechaun, which is funny because I'm pretty sure he's taller than Leo Rush. Um, he said Lashley had the pot of gold around his waist. Um, uh, let's see. Rush had uh, Bobby Lashley pose with the belt and Finn Balor. Um, just basically said, you know what, we're going to do a tag team match, and eventually I'm going to take that from you, and uh, there we go. Uh, Fedmon, oh, oh, Fedmon just made a joke that uh, Nathan may be out brushing uh, the hair of My Little Ponies, and that's why he's not answering. I guess, I guess that's a thing. Nathan's girlfriend collects My Little Ponies, so you see My Little Pony stuff sitting around his house every so often, so I guess Nathan gets some crap about that. So good on you. Keep picking on Nathan. Um, I'm okay with that. We had uh, Braun Strowman come out to be in this tag match. So we had Finn Balor and Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley, Leo Rush. And like almost immediately after it starts, it goes to commercial and then it comes back. It's just kind of like on and on and on. I've lost pretty much all interest. Um, we had, um, let's see. We have Leo Rush get attacked by Braun Strowman. He gets laid out. He takes the pin. He looks at Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley glares at him. He's like reaching out to Bobby Lashley or whatever. Lashley won't acknowledge him. Lashley just leaves and leaves Leo Rush there. So we had Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley break up and then get back together and then break up and get back together and now break up again. Like, what the heck is going on with these guys? I don't understand. And apparently, oh, apparently, the first time they broke up at the pay-per-view, Bobby Lashley slammed Leo Rush. And then the next night on Raw, they were friends again. 
I couldn't understand it. Someone pointed out to me. Uh, of course, I don't. They sent me an email, and I forget who it is. So I apologize, whoever whoever it was that sent me an email. Um, I'll, I'll give you a shout-out next week. Um, but apparently, Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush, they made up on Instagram. So instead of cutting an angle at the pay-per-view or on Raw, or even showing the makeup from Instagram on Raw so that you knew what was going on, WWE just assumed that you're following everybody on Instagram. The guys made up on Instagram and then just showed up on Raw and acted like, okay, everybody knows the story, and that's why they were still together. I do not follow Bobby Lashley or Leo Rush or WWE on Instagram, or really anybody. I, I have an Instagram account. I have not used it in year and a half, two years, maybe. I keep getting emails from Instagram. Hey, we'll make it real easy for you to get back on Instagram. I think I clicked on it once and it like automatically logged you in and whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, this is dumb. Go away. Uh, so yeah. So, uh, that's a big thumbs down. Um, they did talk about Ronda Rousey being fined by WWE for attacking an official, and they showed the story from WWE.com. Um, Ronda Rousey showed up with her um, boyfriend, I guess. I don't think they're married, but Travis Brown, I guess, who's another UFC person. Not familiar with UFC, so I have no idea. But Michael Cole was nice enough to uh, give him a name drop, so that way you know that he must be somebody. Uh, a referee basically uh, got came up and got mad at her because she was late, even though wrestlers appear late at every show. And that's part of how they make an entrance on the show is they show them pulling up in the uh, parking lot while the show is being taped. Um, she was told that uh, WWE has uh, extra security this week. And she just like whatever and walked on. And again, uh, I'm not buying it. We got Alexa Bliss coming out to do her little interview segment. Uh, she was talking about uh, social media followers. Again, as we just talked about, I'm not following you guys. Um, she talked about being the host of WrestleMania. Um, she said something about Lily Singh, who got her own late night talk show. I have no idea who Lily Singh is, and I have no idea where she has a late night talk show. Okay. Um, then she brought out the um, hobo drifter Elias. He said that he was going to be the musical talent uh, at WrestleMania. Um, Alexa Bliss said something about safe spaces and how he could go ahead and sing and not have to worry about it. Um, and he said that he's used to... Oh, every time I keep saying uh, the host of WrestleMania, my echo dot starts going off over here. I just wondered what was going on. Because apparently if you say, Alexa, stop listening. Uh, let's see here. So um, he says he used to being interrupted now, and he thrives on it. He likes the hate. Um, whatever. So uh, Elias again said something about Chicago and kicking field goals and something. And No Way Jose, his music came. Conga Line danced out. Otis and Tucker of Heavy Machinery were with him. Elias got into Otis's face. And then a member of the Conga Line attacked Elias, took off his thing, and it was No Way Jose underneath. Um, again, cut all his hair or whatever, or flattened all his hair. No, he cut it. Yeah, he actually cut it. Whatever. Um, so then... Um, no Way Jose got in the ring and danced and showed off a Chicago Cubs shirt and everybody cheered because it's cheap heat for being in Chicago. And they did a match for Elias versus No Way Jose. Uh, and it was just a joke match. It uh, just went for a couple minutes. Um, Elias uh, did an elbow and a drift away and got a pen. And um, it was dumb. So the whole segment was was really bad. And the conga line, like during the whole match, the conga line is sitting there like cheering for him and whatever. And you can see nobody else in the arena cared. 
Uh, let's see. Fedmon adds, uh, WWE is taking major advantage of the social media craze. I guess they figure all of their viewers are plugged in. In less than five years, I think we will all be. So good guess on their part. PC culture needs to get beat in the ring. Needs to get beat in the ring of these days. Oh, it needs to get beat in the ring one of these days. Um, I guess it, here's the problem. They first of all, everything has devolved into apps, right? Because it used to be you just need MySpace, everybody had MySpace, and then uh, you wanted Twitter, and everybody had Twitter. And then you needed Facebook, and everybody had Facebook. But when they got to Facebook, they abandoned MySpace. But um, then they have added LinkedIn, and then they've added Instagram, and then uh, they did the TikTok the kids are using. There was Vine. Um, and all these things serve, like, different – like, I gave, I, I gave up on Twitter and went to Vine, right? Vine replaced Twitter for me. And then Vine went away, and nothing – I still don't use Twitter a lot, mainly because it's such a cesspool of garbage most of the time. And that's like from everybody coming through. Honestly, I, I did like Google Plus because it was more of a content aggregator than it was a social media platform, which was great um, because you could just follow a lot of news sources and you were just getting headlines and you weren't getting commentary. And you weren't seeing everybody's responses to stuff, and the comments were, you know, basically hidden away. Um, and so that was great. Um, it, I, I just, you know, I, I have all these things. I have a VK. Uh, I have a, uh, a a Tumblr. I don't use it. Uh, I have a MeWe. I don't use it. I have a um, Infinity SN. I don't use it. Um, you know, I just don't, I just don't use any of these things. I have accounts with all this stuff because most of the time I want to go check them out. But honestly, the thing, since Google plus is going away, the thing that I've replaced it with is Feedly and Feedly is just RSS feeds. And so I can just go to the websites I want, grab their feed, throw it in Feedly. I can just go in and see the headlines. And if I want to click on a story, I click on it. I get no commentary. I get no comments. I don't get um, promoted articles. I don't have to worry about Facebook and their algorithm hiding stuff from me or shoving stuff in my face. I don't have to worry about Twitter and and the junk that people post. Um, I, it's just like that's all I want is is content. I don't want commentary from people on Twitter. If there was a way that I could just cut out. Because because someone responds and replies, it'll show you like so and so has replied to whatever. It's like I don't want to see all that stuff, so I, I'm not using all of this stuff that WWE says you have to have. Now I'm on YouTube. I have YouTube, obviously. You're watching YouTube if you're watching this. So YouTube, though, again, I subscribe to the things that I want, and when I go into YouTube, I get my list and I go through my list. Every so often, someone will say, hey, you should check out this channel or check out this video. And I'll go check out that channel or check out that video. And it'll lead me maybe to subscribe to something. What I don't do, I never do, is just go to the video games topic and look at video game stories. What I don't do is go and just look at horror movies and look at the horror movie topics. I look at the specific things that I want to see, and I don't want the rest of it. The online the whole internet culture is becoming television. It's becoming an internet of 2,000 channels and nothing to watch. And I, I love YouTube TV. I love, uh, I have YouTube TV and Philo. I have ESPN Plus. I've got Bleacher Report Live. I, I have my channels curated. I've got Sling International Sports. So that when I go in to, to watch something, I go in and I, I want to watch soccer. I want to watch cricket. I want to watch this TV show. I hate Hulu. Hulu is like the absolute dirt worst where you log into Hulu and the first thing they show you is something you have zero interest in that they want to try to get you to watch. 
And so I keep clicking on every single thing. No, don't show me. Don't show me. Don't show me. Don't show me. So I've been going through. <laughs> it's getting curated to the point. I'm only paying 99 cents a month for Hulu because I got a deal on it. Once that runs out, I'm going to cancel it unless they do another 99 cent deal. It is the worst at just trying to shove stuff into your face. And that's what Facebook is becoming. That's what Twitter is becoming. That's what all of these places are becoming where they, they just want to shove this other stuff you're not interested in because they want to keep you on the platform longer. Well, sorry, I'm not that guy. So, yeah, so WWE, I'm not watching your clips on YouTube. I'm not checking out your Facebook. I'm not following you on Twitter and Instagram or uh, uh, what was that? The tout they used to have, tout. Which uh, tout may still exist. I don't know, but WWE is no longer a partner, so they don't push it anymore. Um, so Fedmon says, I see that as TV's future, almost everything a la carte with the exception of live news and sports. And, and the problem is, I, I agree with you. I mean, because I am someone who streams all my TV. I don't have a cable package anymore. It's all YouTube TV. It's live TV is our main package. Uh, and I've got Philo for some additional channels, Sling World Sports for some sports channels. Um, I agree with you. The problem is Viacom sells all their channels in a pack, right? ESPN will sell their channels in a pack. Um, Fox will sell their channels in a pack. Paramount will sell their channels in a pack. So you can't go in and say, like, I want to watch Investigation Discovery. I don't want to watch Discovery Nature, right? I, I don't care. But for a, 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 a provider to get investigation discovery, they have to get discovery and discovery science and discovery nature and kids discovery and whatever as a package. So you can get a la carte to a point where you can say, I want the Viacom channels. I want the A&E channels. I want the Fox sports and Fox network channels, you know, but you're never going to get to the point where you say, I want this network and this network and this network, other than I can go into YouTube TV and turn things off. So I can go in my lineup and they're like, Bravo. And I was like, nope, hide. Logo, nope, hide. Oxygen, nope, hide. You know, because those are channels I don't want. I don't care. So I can at least hide them and get rid of them. They're not showing up in my package. Tennis channel, nope, hide. Um, but. Uh, I, I when when we get to the point when WWE Network becomes a thing where they I I imagine at some point in the future, and this this may be 20 years, but at some point in the future, there's gonna be no more Raw and SmackDown on cable television. The cable television may not even be, you know, it, it may be for retirement homes and farms you know um it's it's it, it may just become a relic of the past um eventually wwe programming is going to be through a subscription model through a network and when that happens i i see tv as being the thing where you're going to go in and you're going to you're going to say i want to watch this 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 and when you tune in you're just going to have your menu of shows because that's kind of what YouTube TV is already doing where you go in, you have your menu of shows and say, I just want to watch that show. There are shows that I record. I don't even know when they're on. Um, let's, there's, there's a comedy, um, Life in Pieces. My wife and I love to watch Life in Pieces. It's a fun comedy. It's not a sitcom. There's no live uh, you know, crowd, whatever. It's a fun, well-written comedy. That, I, I, couldn't, I don't know what network it's on. I couldn't even tell you what time it's on. Uh, I, I can't tell you what day of the week it's on. All I know, Goldberg's is another one. I don't know what day of the week it's on. I don't know. I, I think it's on ABC because I'm pretty sure I've seen the logo. Like they pop up. You're watching ABC. And so, oh, okay. So that way I know. But uh, but otherwise, you know, I fast forward through commercials. I don't. So I don't watch for other shows that are happening. I just go in. I say I want to watch the show. I watch the show. I don't see anything else. So I don't know what day of the week it's on. When I, I was talking to someone the other day, they're like, oh, well, what night is that on? I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you if it was on a Thursday or a Friday or a Wednesday or a Tuesday because none of it matters anymore. I just know that when I have time, I sit down, I pull up the thing, I watch the show I want to watch. That's, and, and so that's going to be a problem 
for WWE going forward as their shows become less important to watch live because I, I don't watch them live anymore. I try and, and I, I just can't do it because there's so much garbage, especially in three hours of Raw. I don't watch any of them live anymore that when I watch, I fast forward through segments. And this is going to be a big problem for WWE going in the future. They may have X amount of viewers, but when you look at the other thing that, that Nielsen will track and WWE doesn't talk about is the number of viewers and how the patterns drop off. Um, so WWE is weak with female viewers, and we've known that for a long time. It's a male-dominated uh, industry. It's a dominated viewership. That's just how it is. They were putting Ronda Rousey's stuff in the third hour, trying to get more women to stay through all three hours. They show her in the first hour. They talk about it in the second hour, and then they have her come out in the third hour to try to make stretch women viewers to watch. Women viewers are not lasting to the third hour. They're dropping out in the second hour. They watch her come in. They watch the recap and see where the stuff is going, and then they go, nah, it's not worth watching all this other stuff to get there. It's not worth watching No Way Jose garbage for 10 minutes in order to get to the next segment to see if that's something you're interested in. You know, and it used to be, that's one thing Mick Foley always talked about. Mick Foley would always talk about how WWE is this carnival. And if there's something that you don't like here, then you wait 10 minutes for the next segment. And maybe you'll like the, the acrobats on the trapeze instead of the clowns piling out of the car. The problem is though, TV is it becomes less important to watch live that idea of throwing everything into the mix and trying to have a little something for everybody is just going to fail. Uh, shows do need to kind of hyper-focus on their main crowd. That's, I think, one of the reasons why I like Major League Wrestling so much because it is just straight-up pure wrestling for an hour. And I'm not fast-forwarding through matches, you know. Uh, sometimes they have some interview segments and some promo stuff. You're just like, okay, whatever. But for the most part, uh, commercials aside, I watch that whole show all the way through. I don't do that usually in Raw and SmackDown. So anyway, that's my rant about that stuff. All right. We had Kurt Angle versus Chad Gable. Uh, before this, Kurt Angle came out. He said uh, he he's picked his opponent at WrestleMania, and it's someone who has made his life a living hell. So he has decided he's going to fight Baron Corbin in the people Oh, they, they, that's what they did. An entire crowd of people. Imagine 20,000 people going, all at the same time. That's what happened. Nobody cares about Corbin Bernstein and any of his stuff, his general manager or his feuds with Kurt. It's funny because later on in the night, they mentioned that it's a huge controversy and there's a lot of backlash about this idea of Kurt versus Corbin Bernstein at WrestleMania. So they may change it. Uh, at some point, they they may try to add someone else to the mix or do something, but people are not happy with Kurt Angle versus uh, Corbin Burns. So we'll see where that goes. Anyway, this match was actually uh, pretty good. Uh, it went uh, over ten minutes long. It was great. And uh, when Gable came out, he was wearing like a, a USA, you know, red, white, and blue thing um, for his singlet. So kind of playing up the fact that, you know, they had that connection before and everything. And he, like, shook his hand, kind of Ring of Honor style and, and everything. They started the match. The match was really good. Uh, a, a lot of good wrestling. You know, Kurt doesn't quite move the way he used to. Um, he looks like he's getting that old man, like, solid upper body look, you know, where just like a chunk of granite. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, but it was still a good match. Um, so then they, uh, let's see, Angle uh, put him in the, I guess it was the ankle lock, whatever. He, he did something with the leg. Gable tapped out. Um, they seemed, you know, they're emotional. They're hugging. They're, you know, thank you, whatever. And then Corbin Burnson comes out and the crowd boos and they hate him. They don't want to see this. Um, he said something about how he's going to humiliate Kurt in his last match. The crowd started chanting uh, about John Cena. We want Cena. We want Cena. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, Apollo Crews showed up and uh, he said he was going to shut up Corbin. They wanted a match. 
Um, basically, he, they just kind of egged him on until uh, Corbin said, okay, fine, um, and whatever. So there you go. So Corbin burns him. Nobody likes him. Crowd booed him like crazy. Fedmon says they got to have that drama. WWE is basically the guy version of a daytime soap opera these days. It's good for some parts and bad for others. And yes, that's that's been a criticism of wrestling for a long time. Is that as as modern wrestling, we'll call it, has taken over. Um, you can't. It, it's very hard for wrestling promoters and promotions to just present one guy versus another guy in a fight, right? There's, it, it's no longer this, you know, boxing main event like it used to be. Um, and even boxing has gotten more like wrestling. The UFC has gotten more like wrestling with the promos and the interview segments and everything else that hype up to the fight. Um, but yeah, that's always been kind of the criticism of wrestling is that like Raw is not a wrestling show. It's a show about the making of a wrestling show. Right, because you're not watching it just to see wrestling. You're watching it to see how the matches come together and the storylines. And yes, that can be great in some cases, the way they played out, especially with the right personalities. The problem is WWE's in a spot. They didn't have a lot to do with Kurt. They didn't have a lot to do with Corbin Burnson, and so they kept doing stuff with them. The crowd didn't react, didn't like it, and instead of going, okay, well, let's find something else we can do, maybe the crowd will like. They just said, well. We don't have anything else. And instead of mixing up something else, we're just going to keep throwing them together and just let it happen. So that sucks. They had uh, Sasha and Bailey, right? They were in the ring with Charlie. Um, they said they uh, they made an appearance in NXT, but they've yet to appear on SmackDown. The Iconics are looking for them there. Uh, are you ducking them? And Sasha Banks was about to freak out on her, but Bailey took over. They said that they would be appearing on SmackDown. So whatever, blah, blah, blah. Natalia, Beth Phoenix interrupted. Um, she said that Beth Phoenix said that she was happy that, uh, you know, they were able to go from NXT to the main roster, become a team when the uh, women's tag team championship. Um, but had a chance to become tag team champs with Natalia because of course they didn't have belts back then. Um, so basically they wanted a shot at the titles. So they asked to have the match at WrestleMania. Chowd cre uh, cheered. They said, that's great. But Bailey said, listen, Beth, you've been out of wrestling for a long time. I think you need some more time to prepare. Um, Bailey said that she's just trying to be reasonable here. You know, she doesn't, uh, you know, it's been six years since Beth Phoenix has been wrestling. Uh, and she also says that wrestling has evolved since the time that uh, Beth Phoenix used to wrestle. Um, so Natalia started freaking out and said that Beth Phoenix was a Hall of Famer. Um, they're not afraid of a match. Um, Sasha Banks said that Natalia was just riding on Beth Phoenix coattails because Natalia's not good enough for a match at WrestleMania. Uh, Natalia smacked Sasha Banks. Banks attacked her back. Beth Phoenix threw uh, Sasha Banks aside. Bailey got in her face. Phoenix uh, shoved her to the ground. Um, they all like started, you know, fighting and whatever. And then it goes to commercial. So they come back and they're having a match, and they're doing uh, Natalia versus Sasha Banks in a match. They're going for a couple minutes, and Nia Jax comes out and starts cutting a promo on the stage while this match is supposed to be going on. Um, whatever, whatever, whatever. Tamina attacks Beth Phoenix. Um, she hit super kicks on Bailey and Sasha Banks. The ref called for a DQ. Natalia went to check on Beth Phoenix. Uh, Tamina and Natalia posed, and they said that they would see them at WrestleMania. Uh, and so there you go. So it looks like we're going to have maybe Tamina and Nia Jax, Beth Phoenix and Natalia, uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey, and then a couple teams from SmackDown. They're going to do a big women's tag team schmoz, six way, eight way, whatever. That could be good or bad, depending on your point of view of all that. Um, 
I'm not a big fan of the idea. They had Ricochet versus Jinder Mahal. Remember when Jinder Mahal was a thing? I hardly do. Um, the Singh brothers, of course, were out there with them because WWE is still paying for all these guys. I don't know why. Um, so Ricochet does a whole bunch of stuff and ends up throwing Jinder Mahal to the outside. So the Singh brothers go to check on him, and Ricochet jumps outside, hits them all, um, gets Mahal back in, hits the 650, gets the pinfall. Um, the crowd liked it. They liked when he got the win, and they were excited for that, but they were dead during the entire time that Jinder Mahal was beaten by Ricochet. Um, they did not care. Uh, they had some other person backstage talking to Seth Rollins. I don't know who it was. Uh, some other female interviewer that I don't recognize. Uh, said something about McIntyre. Um, Rollins said that tonight, uh, uh, tonight was going to be for Dean Ambrose and Roman. He was going to destroy McIntyre. Um, he said he's, he hopes Brock Lesnar watches his match because it's something for Brock Lesnar to look forward to. And then Rollins said he was going to burn Suplex City straight to the ground. So there's that phrase coming back again and again and again. Uh, they had Ronda Rousey versus Dana Brooke for the Women's Championship. Um, this went like 20 seconds. Um, Ronda Rousey just basically. Walked up to Dana Brooke, beat the crap out of her, and got her in the uh, arm bar, and that was it. Um, she was supposed to break the hold, but she didn't. The referee was yelling at her to stop. Another referee ran down. Ronda Rousey got up, attacked the referee. She went over. She talked to Travis Brown. Um, she attacked a security guard. Travis Brown attacked, uh, attacked a security guard. Brown picked up Ronda Rousey, lifted her over the barricade, and the two of them left through the crowd. So I'm guessing this means Travis Brown is now part of the storyline. He will be there at WrestleMania. Maybe, in fact, he'll get involved somehow in the match. There's something we can look forward to. Apollo Crews got a match with his uh, best friend, Corbin Burnson. Apollo Crews we forgot about until he uh, wrestled a couple weeks ago. Um. This is where they talked about uh, the social media turning against uh, Baron Corbin and uh, Kurt Angle. But anyway, um, people started crowning, uh, crowning, chanting in the crowd for John Cena again. We want Cena. We want Cena. We want Cena over and over and over. Very clear. The crowd does not like Corbin Burnson. Um, Apollo Crews ended up going for the small package and win, and Kurt Angle came out to uh, celebrate uh, for Apollo Crews. So there you go. Congratulate him on that. Good deal. They um, had Batista live via satellite from his home in Tampa, Florida. They had Cole ask him why he wanted the match with Triple H. He said, I don't like him. Uh, Cole said, what about when you guys were back together in Evolution? And Batista says, no, it goes farther back. Uh, he said, uh, everyone thinks that uh, Triple H took him under his wing and, and put him, uh, uh, you know, into evolution. But uh, Triple H was just using him to be muscle, to keep everybody back. He said that uh, DX and evolution were all these groups that were just built uh, in order to help Triple H feel like uh, he was someone more important, uh, which... Actually, if you've seen um, Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, the video on YouTube from, uh, what is it, Max Brooks uh, put together? No, Max Landis. Sorry, Max Landis put together. Uh, it basically talks about the history of Triple H and how he's basically a B-plus player who surrounds himself with much better talent to uh, try to pretend like he is the best person of all time. It's pretty funny. Um, all right. So then... Um, Batista said that he hopes that uh, after the match, Vince will fire Hunter so that his career would end at WrestleMania. Then he said, interview over, and kicked everybody out from his live via several thing there. Uh, backstage, we had Charlie talking to Braun Strowman about Saturday, the Saturday Night Live dudes who are not funny at all. Uh, and apparently they made comments on Twitter. And he said he didn't care what those two guys said on Twitter. With you, Braun Strowman. He said uh, they made him so mad 
that he is going to enter the Andre the Giant Battle Royal at WrestleMania so as many people as possible would get these hands. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, so I, I guess, I don't know if he did appear on Saturday Night Live. I'm guessing not. Otherwise, they would have shown clips. So I don't know what happened to that. Um, and again, pushing Twitter. We talked about social media already. I don't care. Like, I, and, and the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, I don't think the Saturday Night Live guys are going to be in that Battle Royal. So I guess maybe Braun Strowman is going to win. He's going to have the trophy. The two guys from Saturday Night Live are going to come out and congratulate him. Say, hey, look, no hard feelings. We're really happy that you won. And then he's going to take it and break it over one of them and beat him with it. And then he'll celebrate and leave, I guess. Or they'll do a swerve. And the Saturday Night Live guys will grab the trophy and beat Braun Strowman with them. And uh, they'll get over that way. That, that'd be a good show. So um, Bliss showed up. She got in the middle of this mix. She said she wanted to make sure that WrestleMania goes off without a hitch because that's her job as the host of WrestleMania, which apparently no other host in the history of WrestleMania has ever had, or if they have, they've all done a very terrible job of what they're supposed to be doing. Um, she said she wanted to patch things up between the guys. Braun Strowman threatened to break them, uh, but she uh, begged him again, please. She goes, give me a week. I'm going to come up with something. Drew McIntyre came out, did a promo. It was long. Nobody cared. Seth Rollins appeared on screen because uh, McIntyre said something about Reigns beating leukemia, but he can't beat Drew McIntyre. So Rollins uh, told them to play the clip of the chair attack. Um, Rollins said that was for his brothers, but tonight he's going to beat them. That's going to be for himself. McIntyre started to storm to the back. Rollins ran out onto the ramp. The two of them started fighting. They were separated by the officials. Um, then they they set it up to be the actual match. Uh, they started the match, and then they just went to the outside. They were fighting outside. They, um, I don't know, they were using chairs. They were, again, what happened with Dean Ambrose and McIntyre last week? They started doing the same thing this week. Um, Rollins ended up hitting a super kick. Uh, Lesnar's music hit. So, of course, he does the dumb baby face thing where the music hits. And he turns and he watches and he watches and he watches and he watches. And then guess what? He gets attacked from behind. Um, McIntyre hits him with the Claymore kick. McIntyre wins and the show goes off the air. That was Monday Night Raw. That was terrible. That is a horrible, horrible show. There was not... There was not one single thing on this show. No, wait, I take that back. I take that back. I was going to say, there was nothing that I uh, I liked, but I, I will take that back because the Chad Gable-Kurt Angle match was actually good. The, when, when they were in there for that match and you ignored everything else with Corbin Burnson that was going on on that show, uh, that match was really good. Everything else was terrible. So that was basically three hours of Raw to watch one good 15-minute match. So there you go. Now we go to SmackDown. Again, I'm tired of this Kofi storyline. Just put, we know Kofi's going to be in the match. You've done this storyline for too long for it not to end with him in the match because it, it's not building to anything else. There is nothing else that this story works to other than Kofi being in the match. The only, the only possible other outcome would be Kofi defeats Daniel Bryan for the title on SmackDown, but then it's still the three-way match they do at WrestleMania just with Kofi as the champion. That's the only other outcome other than just adding Kofi to the match. I don't know why they keep doing this. But... They keep doing this. Kevin Owens. Uh, they announced that he is going to be having the KO show tonight with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. 
They had The Miz come down to the ring. Talked about Shane McMahon. Talked about his father. Talked about um, Shane's father was different. Um, said that uh, the McMahons don't own him. They don't own Kofi Kingston. Miz wasn't born a rich man. Uh, people told him he would never be successful. He proved them all wrong and won the WWE Championship and one of the worst title reigns until Jinder Mahal. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Um, he said he has a good work ethic, whether people boo him or cheer him. Oh, my gosh. Can we quit this thing? All of this is going back to the thing with Daniel Bryan from a couple of years ago when they were doing the uh, SmackDown, was it SmackDown Live, SmackDown Talk Smack. I guess that's what it was called. And then Daniel Bryan and The Miz get into an argument. And Daniel Bryan said that Miz was a boring wrestler. And Miz says, I don't take time off. I don't take holidays. I don't, I don't take vacations. I'm here every night working. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like everyone goes, oh, that, that thing was so great. And look at Miz. It's like all, all Miz did was yell. He was not great. He yelled. There was nothing else to it except him yelling. And basically what he said is, I am a boring-ass wrestler who doesn't take vacations. That was the point. That's all he said. He didn't say he was a dynamic wrestler. He didn't say, give me credit for being a great wrestler. He didn't say, I'm going to be one of the best Hall of Famers of all time. He just said, I wrestle in a style that doesn't get me hurt, so I can be here every night. Guess what? Boring as hell. The Miz sucks. Again, he might be the nicest guy in real life. Everybody seems to think that he's super nice. His show, his reality show that he has, apparently he, he comes across as such a wonderful guy. Great for him. I wish him all the best in the world. Keep Go do that show. Don't do wrestling. I just, I don't. He's not a good wrestler. And he does not have exciting matches. Be an actor. Do a comedy. Do, do something with The Rock. Miz, if you announce your retirement for wrestling and you start doing comedies, do game night two, uh, and, and you know, uh, do, do season six of Arrested Development, go, go, go act and, and do other stuff and announce you're never going to wrestle again, I'll be your number one fan. Great. Fantastic. Don't wrestle. Get off the show. Uh, let's see what happened. Uh, that was it. So basically, uh, he says he's finally earned the fans respect and all the fans chanted, you deserve it. Come on. There you go. Um, they had the iconics, um, talking about how they uh, called Sasha Banks and Bailey to come to SmackDown to, um, defend their titles. They talked about uh, Nia Jax and Tamina and Natalia and Beth Phoenix. Um, they said they would defeat them. They had a non-title match because I guess you can call them in to have a match, but you don't actually get a title match. You still have to earn it, even though everybody on Raw can just call them out and have a title match. I guess. I don't know. But anyway, um, the Iconics were able to defeat Sasha Banks and Bayley, so they beat them in a non-title match, so I guess now they can get their title match, they can get their, or they get added to the mix at WrestleMania, or whatever it is. They didn't really make it clear like what the point of this match was for it being non-title. Um, but I, I guess, now that I think about it, it's so they can be in the, the thing at WrestleMania. So WrestleMania will now be Nia Jackson, Tamina, Natalia, Beth Phoenix, Sasha, and Bayley in the Iconics. And probably two more teams to come. I would guess. All right. So anyway, the match was a mess. The Iconics, uh, you know, I'm sorry. They're not great. Again, they, they might be wonderful people. Not great wrestlers. Uh, backstage, we had someone interviewing Rey Mysterio. Uh, he had Dominic there. Dominic has gotten old. Um, like, he... Uh, He's apparently he's been training for wrestling. He wants to be a wrestler. He's grown up. I still remember him as being the little kid uh, when they were doing the whole dumb storyline where uh, I'm going to be Dominic's father. 
you know, whatever that whole thing. So anyway, he had Dominic there. Dominic was big. Uh, they talked about uh, wrestling and everything, whatever. Um, Dominic's proud of his father. He's going to sit at the front row at WrestleMania, watch him beat up the bully Samoa Joe at WrestleMania. So all the stuff with Andrade and Joe for the last two months has not been leading to Andrade versus or Mysterio, Ray, Ray and Andrade for the last two months has not, is not going to lead to Ray versus Andrade at WrestleMania. It's going to be Ray versus Joe at WrestleMania. So I don't know what's happening with Andrade at WrestleMania or anybody else who's been in that mix. Kevin Owens, anybody else? No idea. Um, no, Kevin Owens wasn't in that. Who, who else was in that? There was somebody else. God, no, I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. They had Kevin Owens. He brought out Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Lynch, uh, she's still doing the thing that, you know, claiming that her foot is hurt, even though it's not. So they can still play off that a little bit. Um, Kevin Owens, uh, talked about the fact that Ronda Rousey's not here. He uh, talked about the comments made by Charlotte Flair, cutting her promos. They've done a lot of talking. Um, Kevin Owens says he wants to see them fight. Um, he, he, basically gets them to face off and is like trying to egg them on into a fight. He's basically got Charlotte and Becky face to face, trying to build tension between the two of them because there's really no tension between the two of them. The tension is between Rhonda and Becky and Charlotte is just kind of there. So they're trying to build some tension, some more tension between Charlotte and Becky. And the two of them have had some stuff like in the past, but really nobody really cares about Charlotte and Becky. They care about Rhonda and Becky. So they're trying to rebuild the tension there uh, with Charlotte. So basically he gets them facing off. He's trying to get them to fight each other. They're getting in each other's face. And then security comes out, breaks it all up. So they both start attacking all the security guys and whatever. And the um, show goes to commercial. Or they cut to the back. They have uh, someone talking to AJ Styles. He talked about his match with Randy Orton coming up at WrestleMania. Um Orton has a lot of advantages, but he's going to tear down the house at WrestleMania. Um, he also talked about Kofi a little bit, said good luck to him, um, and uh, wished him well in his match later tonight. Then we go back to the ring. We have Daniel Bryan and Rowan coming down, talking about Kofi Kingston, the gauntlet match. He says this gauntlet match is an injustice because Kofi doesn't deserve it. So the fans start breaking out Kofi, 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 Kofi. Biggie, Xavier Woods, banned from ringside, and they're going to watch the match from the back. So we got Kofi versus Sheamus with Cesaro. Uh, they had Sheamus beat up on Kofi. Kofi took the heat. The announcers go, can Kofi come back from this? He may lose his chance at WrestleMania. Kofi may not win, and then Kofi wins. Yay. They showed the New Day watching from the back. They showed the Usos, Mustafa Ali. Um, the Usos are handing out pancakes to everybody, uh, handing out pancakes to the Hardys. Uh, they're all standing around watching the match from the back. Next, they had Kofi versus Cesaro. Cesaro uh, attacks Kofi and uh, starts beating him up, getting the heat over him. The announcers go, this could be the end for Kofi. He may lose his spot at WrestleMania. Can Kofi come back from this? This may be it. His WrestleMania dreams are over. And then Kofi wins. Yay, they showed the New Day and Mustafa Ali and the Usos and Jeff Hardy, and they're all watching in the back and celebrating for Kofi. And then they showed Rowan coming down and attacking Kofi. And this starts the next match. And uh, Rowan is beating up on Kofi and attacking and getting the heat. And they said, this could be the end for Kofi. He may lose a chance at WrestleMania. This may be the end of his WrestleMania dream. Can he come back from this? And Kofi comes back and defeats Rowan and he wins. Yay! Then they had Samoa Joe come down. And Samoa Joe attacks Kofi Kingston. And Samoa Joe's getting the heat on him. And they said this could be the end for Kofi. Kofi may lose his match at WrestleMania. This may be the end of his WrestleMania dream. Can Kofi come back from this? And Kofi wins. Defeat Samoa Joe. They showed the New Day in the back. With the Usos and the Hardys and Mustafa Ali and everybody else. And they're all cheering and celebrating for Kofi because Kofi wins. Yay. Uh, 
And Joe attacks Kofi, puts him in the uh, clutch, Coquina clutch, and uh, still attacks him. Then they had Randy Orton come down. Randy Orton attacks Kofi Kingston. Randy Orton throws him in the barricades, calls him stupid, because I guess Kofi called him stupid at some point and whatever. Um, so I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah. This is what happened. Orton starts beating up on Kofi. They said, this could be the end of it for Kofi at WrestleMania. Kofi may lose out on his WrestleMania dream. Can Kofi come back? Guess what happened? Yeah, Kofi Kingston beat Randy Orton. Fifth time in a row. We heard the same thing from commentary all night. He's going to lose his chance. Can this be it? It's going to be over at WrestleMania. He's going to lose his opportunity. He's not going to make it. He's not going to get the chance. And then he got it. Like, these five matches could have been a lot more entertaining, and they were the last time it happened. This time when they did it, it was so boring because it was just the same thing five times in a row. So then, Big E, Xavier Woods came down. They celebrated with Kofi. He won. He beat all five of those guys. Yay, Vince McMahon comes out. Uh -oh. Vince McMahon says, you still have one more match you have to beat. Daniel Bryan. And if you remember, last week, Daniel Bryan was on the stage. He was just kind of hiding behind Rowan, looking over Rowan's shoulder. But he was there. He was on the stage. So he is part of the match. So they go and they have a match. And Bryan attacks him and hits him and beats him in the corner and uh, gets him in the lock. And Kingston is able to get to the ropes. and They have to break it. He hits the SOS. Uh, Bryan attacks him. And gets the heat on him and beats him up. And uh, Tim, uh, Kofi Kingston goes for the crossbody. Brian moves. And Brian hits the running knee. And he gets the win. Kofi loses. He's not going to WrestleMania. He's not getting a shot. This storyline must continue one more week. Ladies and gentlemen, what the heck is going on? This is the dumbest thing ever. Why is this storyline still going? Like, I don't care anymore. I really don't. Like, I like Kofi. I would like to see Kofi go to WrestleMania, win the title, be the WWE Championship. Be the WWE Championship? Sure, let him be the championship. Let him paint himself gold. He can come out every week. He can come out with uh, gold dust as the man in his corner. He is the championship. But this week after week, after week, after week of just nonstop garbage, of just replaying the same thing over and over. Kofi wants to go to WrestleMania. He wants to get his shot. He gets screwed out of his shot. He's got to try to earn another shot. He's got to find his way back in. Like, it's just, <sighs> let Kofi win so he's in the match at WrestleMania and then hype it up. They think they have to keep pushing this until the week before. And then, and then they only have the one week to hype it. But then they think, oh, you're going to be hyped because you didn't think you were getting this match. But now you're getting this match. Well, guess what? Like, I'm already over it. Like, put him in the match or don't. But I kind of don't care at this point. If he's not going to be in it, then be done. If he's going to be in it, put him in it. But SmackDown was like three matches and then the gauntlet. The gauntlet went long. It was the same thing. In all five matches, Kofi gets beat up. Is he going to lose? No, he's not. He wins. Next guy, is he going to lose? On and on and on. Same thing. He took the heat. He got beat up. Eventually, he wins. Yay, you're happy. They screw him over again. I, I'm not mad that they're screwing over a character. I mean, this is something that happens a lot in wrestling. It, it It's a common thing. It's what happened with Stone Cold and Vince, right? Like, I get it. But when you're, you're you're not doing this as an ongoing storyline, you're doing this as the build to WrestleMania, right? When it happens with a character versus another character, and I've been that I've been on the other side of the storyline, right? Because I've been president or GM of wrestling promotions as the professor, 
I've gone out. I've done this. I've screwed guys over. Sage Ramsey is a guy here, wrestles in the Midwest. I have screwed him over so many times. It's like the ongoing feud the two of us have. Looks like he's going to get a title shot. I screw him over. He doesn't get the title. I've done it in 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 several different promotions, even, where I've screwed him out of his title shot. I, I get it, but it works as an ongoing story. This is not an ongoing story. This is a storyline to get to a match at WrestleMania. Like, this has an end date. This isn't an ongoing feud. What's the other way that this can win? The only other way that this ends is with Kofi versus Vince at WrestleMania, and that ain't happening. Vince is way, way beyond those days, or at least I hope. So. Oh my gosh, I hope, I hope Vince understands this. Febmon in the chat room is I'm starting to see a pattern develop with Kofi and WrestleMania. Uh, they are putting too much crap in the script. Time to grab the plunger and some X lax. And and that kind of goes back to what you were saying before with the soap opera, adding the drama, trying to stretch it out, trying to make it seem like a much bigger deal than it is. But it was already a big deal. You know, they, you couldn't have done anything better than what they did those first two weeks. And the fact that they keep pushing it and they keep pushing it and they keep pushing it and they keep, keep pushing it. it. It gets to a point where you just have fatigue from the same thing over and over. And, and it's it's not working for me anyway. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. If, like I said, I have a Twitter, at PCN underscore dirt. I never use it. If you want to send me a message there, I'll see it eventually. I won't respond to it too quickly, though, know, because it's whatever. There is an official Pop Culture Network group. We did not set up the group. One of our, our fans, one of our viewers, actually set up the group on Facebook, made us mods for it, administrators, but we didn't create it. We didn't set it up. So you have to go, you find it, you can read it, but if you want to post or respond, you have to apply to join the group. That's just the way he set it up. That's fine, whatever. You can always go there, join the group, post comments, messages. We'll see them there. You can respond on the uh, Traditional Champion Podcast page. You can respond on the Pop Culture Network page. You can respond on my personal uh, YouTube page. You can go to popculturenetwork.com. You can leave comments. We have a Facebook comments plugin if you've got Facebook. You just verify with Facebook. You can leave comments there. If you've got WordPress, you can leave comments on the Pop Culture Network page. Um, anywhere you want to get a hold of us. Or if you want to, you can email me dirt at popculturenetwork.com or dirt at thepopc.net. The Pop Culture Network, thepopc.net. Um, that's another way if you have any other questions or comments. Fedmon, thanks for hanging out in the chat. Uh, Willis Wheeler, thanks for sending me the message. Whoever sent me that email, thank you for the email. Um, Fedmon says, I think Nathan is either dead or in a coma or the dogs got to him. Probably uh, two nights, 16 hours of overtime. He probably just woke up recently and he woke up to the dogs barking and licking his face. Uh, and now he's got to get ready to go to work because he's got work in 20 minutes, I think. So anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.